Temple Car Guy here and today I'm checking out the Seikane portable unit that offers wireless CarPlay and Android Auto as well as front and rear dash cameras all built into this low profile sleek display that you can add to any car. If it can actually do everything that it promises on the box, this might be the bargain of the year as it only sells for $100. This unit comes packaged in a pretty simple box and of course it comes with everything that you will need to get started. You get the unit itself, you also get the power adapter, the extension auxiliary cord and the manual itself. Pretty simple and gets you started right away. Installing this device is very simple. All you really have to do is plug the cigarette lighter adapter into your car for some power and then stick this onto your dash. Unfortunately, it does not come with a suction cup, so it's gonna be more of a permanent install when you use this huge pad of adhesive. Uh, for temporary purposes, I'm gonna be using just two little strips to put it on my dash so I can test it but otherwise it would be very, very secure on your dash. You also wanna make sure that the camera has some kind of view uh, out of the windshield instead of just pointing down, right? So I'll try maybe putting it over here or over there for a better view for the camera. As far as the connections, very, very simple. You have your USB type C plug right here. So that plugs into the car. You also have an AV in, so that's gonna be for the rear camera that I'm gonna plug in in just a minute. We have our micro SD card for the dash cam and we have the GPS in, which is optional and I did not tick that option. So I do not have the GPS uh, adapter for this unit, but you can get that for you know a few bucks uh, while you're ordering this one. The USB Type-C cable that plugs into the unit actually splits into three. So you can plug in your phone to charge and to use wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto if you choose to, instead of using wireless. Then the second wire is your auxiliary out. So this will go into just you know, one of these extensions that then plugs into your car. This will give you the best quality audio, but of course we can also use FM instead of the auxiliary port if your car doesn't have one of these. So yeah, let me plug everything in, route the rear camera, and then we'll test and see how well this works. All right, so I just plugged it in and let's see what it looks like once it started and how long it takes for actually to start up. All right, so it played a little jingle for us, and there you go, it started. So it only took a few seconds for it to actually power on, which is pretty impressive. And right away, it starts recording. So I did put in a formatted micro SD card into the device. I believe the maximum is 128 gigabytes, so be careful of that, don't put anything too large, but it does have to be fast enough for it to be able to record video. Now, the main screen here is pretty simple, but actually nicely designed. We have the recorder, so that's gonna be our dash cam. We have mobile internet. So that's gonna allow us to share internet from our cell phone to this device if we want to. And then we can also have screencast. So that's gonna be Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or the mirroring. So you can mirror your phone directly to this display. Pretty cool, you can play movies and things like that. We also have a Bluetooth player here. So basically if you connect your audio through just Bluetooth instead of using CarPlay, you can play the stuff through here. We have our time and everything else on this side right here. And then at the bottom we have FM, Bluetooth, replay, brightness and settings. So FM is gonna allow us to stream our music from this device Device, which comes from the phone into uh, the FM station on our car. We have Bluetooth, so we'll be able to connect our phone to this device. You cannot stream music from this device to the car through Bluetooth. I know some people have been asking about that. Replay is gonna look back at the recorded footage from the DVR and brightness, of course, it changes the brightness of the display. Settings, let's go into settings and check that out pretty quick right here. We have a few options here. We have a mobile link. We have CarPlay position. So this is a very cool one. Actually, we can do left, right, or we can do full screen. So you can do just one side of the screen and then have our camera on the, on the other side, or you can do full screen. We'll do both and see what that looks like. We can change the resolution of the camera on the front. So that's gonna be 4K. I'm gonna keep it at 4K. Loop recording will stick to one minute. We have a G sensor sensitivity, so from low to high. Screen saver, setting guidelines. So this is for the rear camera, but I did not set it up as a reversing camera. I just put it as a DVR type of thing. But yes, that can be done if needed. And we can actually mirror or flip the rear camera, which is awesome. 
Some cameras don't allow you to do that and it sucks. We have to actually like flip it manually or do it in software on your computer. You can also change the language, lots of different languages. So you can switch to basically anything you want. We have time settings, so you can change the format of the time. And of course the Wi-Fi switch, whether you turn it on or off, which can be used for downloading videos from this device. You can also format the SD and reset this to the factory settings. Anyway, let's quickly check out the recorder. So if we click on the recorder, we are brought to the both cameras. So we have the front camera that's just on the back of this and the rear camera. And yeah, it looks actually pretty good. I don't know how the frame rate's gonna look, but I will go for a quick drive and then uh, include that in the video here to show you how it looks. Now we can also switch cameras. So we can go just full screen on the front camera, full screen on the rear camera, or we do a split camera just like that. We can of course lock the files and we can turn off audio so we don't record audio with our video. And then we can just take a screenshot just like that. Anyway, so that's pretty cool and I will show you what the video looks like. But yeah, that's a big function of this device that's kind of included as a bonus, I guess. But the main thing that we are interested in is actually screencast or well, the CarPlay, right? So I'm gonna go to Bluetooth right here. I'm gonna grab my phone. And on the phone, we're gonna go to Bluetooth and just wait for it to show up. And there it is, I'm gonna click on that. If it's asking you for a password, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but mine didn't, so there it is. Use CarPlay. And there it is. So it's as simple as that, what? It took 10 seconds for us to set up CarPlay on this and it's done. There you go. You have it ready to go. So super cool, very easy to set up. And yes, of course it works. So we can go to the map and we can have, you know, like a split screen right here. We can go to the regular one. We can go just straight to the map like you normally would. And of course we can also play some music. I don't have any music on this phone, but we can play a radio station just like that. So live stream it. And there you go. It's already playing. We can turn the volume down or up, just like that. Very easy. And of course, right now it's playing through the device itself from my phone wirelessly. But of course we can switch it to the auxiliary cord that I was showing you earlier and play like that through the car. Or we can use the FM station, which I will show you right now. On my car, I went to 89.9. So this is an FM station that's not really being used in my local area. Now on this unit, we're just going to click FM. And then we're going to switch our audio output from speaker to FM, right? So this is where you actually can switch uh, audio output. You can go from speaker to FM or to auxiliary. So I'm just going to click on FM. And then we're going to go to 89.9. 89.9 just right there and we are done now if i turn the volume up on the car you notice that there is no more static because it's tuned into this now all right so we're going to go back and then we're going to go once again to screencast which is our car play go back to music and play something and now it's coming through the car how cool is that? So that works really well. Of course, the audio quality is gonna be about the same as you would expect from an FM station. If it's not as good as you expect, you can go to a different station that might be less busy and has less signal, uh, somewhere in the range that's not very often used in your area. But yeah, I'm very impressed with how that all works. But actually what I wanna do now is go to settings and then we're gonna go to uh, car play position and switch that to the left side and just hit confirm it's gonna restart right now and then we'll see what it looks like and how fast it actually connects to my phone well, as you can see that just went to static mode because we no longer have the signal i'm gonna turn that down and let it restart so it just restarted and now it's gonna start recording and it should automatically connect to our apple carplay as well so let's give it a minute and see what happens. And there you go. So it's connecting to Bluetooth, giving us some instructions and there it is. So it automatically connected to the Apple CarPlay. I can put the phone to the side now. So we have Apple CarPlay here and we have the actual uh, camera showing on this side as well. So it looks like the front camera is the default one. And I think that's the one that's gonna stick to. There might be settings to change this, but 
Uh, I have not had a chance to find those yet. But yeah, very impressed with how well this works, especially for $100. That's just very impressive. You get front camera, rear camera, wireless CarPlay, Android Auto. You can stream your phone to this device as well. You have different options for setting up your CarPlay. You can do half a screen or like three quarters of a screen and a quarter with your camera. Of course, you can put the, you know, the map full screen or, or you can split that screen even further. So you have three different sections. Very cool, works very nicely. Very impressed with this part so far. The display also looks really good. I mean, it's not IPS, so the blacks are not like 100% black, but for the price, I think it's amazing value as far as the screen. I also like the sleek designs. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I love that it's a low profile screen that doesn't block the view and just looks more OEM with this installation method. I mean, at first I didn't really like it because you can move it and it's kind of hard to commit where you want to install it but it does look good and in some older cars i would probably just take four little screws and drill it into the dashboard and just keep it mounted there permanently one thing i wanted to mention is that the rear camera can be set up as a reversing camera but you do have to basically connect it to your reverse light which is a little bit complicated but i do have a video on how that's done just right here it's a bit of a process but it will work and i have made it work on my bmw 335 and i'm very happy with the results but now let's go for a quick drive and see what those cameras actually look like on the road with the sun and everything else before looking at the footage i wanted to quickly touch on the app it uses a generic dash cam app called road cam and i say generic because i've used it with other dash cams as well all you have to do is connect your phone to the unit's wi-fi turn off your cell data Data, go to the app and click on add recorder it only takes a few seconds and then you are presented with the live view of the camera here you can start or stop recording view recorded clips and download them to your phone for me it took three minutes to download 18 clips which is 18 minutes of footage not bad speaking of footage we can see that the front of the camera does a decent job of capturing video it may claim it's 4k and the file resolution is 4k but i'm not sure i would call this true 4k luckily it does record at 25 frames per second so it's not too choppy this camera would really benefit from hdr and some stabilization but overall license plates and street signs are readable so it's good enough now that we're in the car we can also test the microphone and see if it sounds any good because of course this microphone is to be used for the car play audio input as well so when you make phone calls to your friends through carplay that's the microphone that's going to be used well is it any good the rear camera doesn't do as well and looks fairly pixelated for 1080p and could use some more bitrate to get more data in. It could be useful in some situations, but I would not rely on it for reading license plates or getting a lot of information. Overall, the cameras performed acceptably, and I see it as a welcomed bonus add-on for the CarPlay unit. So of course, there are a lot of positive things about this that I have talked about so far, but are there any negatives? Well, the GPS is not included, that's an option, so that could be seen as a negative, but it also does lower the price for the base version for those that don't need it. We also don't get a micro SD card included, so that could be something that maybe they should throw in, maybe even a small one, like a 32 gig one. Also, the screen, they say it's 1080p on, the, on their page, but it's actually 1600 by 600, which is not quite 1080p, but it does look good, and the resolution seems just fine for this size of screen. Overall, I am very impressed with what this can do for $100. I was not expecting it to be nearly as good, I'll be honest. I thought the screen was going to look horrible and it's going to be super laggy, but it's fairly responsive. The screen looks good even in the sun and it connects to your phone very quickly, which is good. Uh, lots of options to change, but nothing overcomplicated and I do like this very stylish modern interface. If you'd like to purchase one yourself, I will have a link to their website down below and of course if you'd like to check out more reviews click on this playlist right here or if you'd like to see more videos on this bmw i3 i recommend clicking on this one so thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it don't forget to leave your comments down below and i'll see you in the next one